Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Valley Waters Public Art Strategic Plan Community Meeting. I'm Don Rocha, Assistant Officer with External Affairs here at Valley Water. I want to thank everyone for making time to join us and also those joining us online. I'm personally excited about this project. This is a great opportunity for a public agency to incorporate public art in its work, and it also use it as a platform to further engage the community throughout the process. To start tonight's meeting, I would like to introduce our Valley Water Board members in attendance and invite them to offer some welcoming remarks. Vice Chair Keegan. Thank you, Don. Um, so I'm Barbara Keegan and I'm Vice Chair of the Valley Water Board of Directors. And on behalf of Valley Water and the directors, I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you, both here in person and those joining us on Zoom. It's always great to see our community come together to help shape how Valley Water implements our projects and particularly in this case, public art in Santa Clara County. At Valley Water, we believe that beautification of our spaces isn't just about aesthetics, but a creative way to use art to educate about water resources, promote environmental stewardship, prevent graffiti and litter, and beautify our creeks and waterways. During tonight's meeting, you're going to have the opportunity to learn more about our public art strategic plan process. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions, share ideas, and actively participate. Because when, as a community, we talk about public art, it's really about the public and artists working together to create something meaningful for our community. On behalf of the entire Valley Water Board, we're very excited for this opportunity and thank you again for being here with us today. Thank you, Vice Chair Keegan. Director Bell. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Bell. I'm uh, the Valley Water Board Director from District 4. And I want to take a, a moment to thank everybody for uh, participating and uh, supporting our uh, public art strategic planning that we're doing. We're going to incorporate uh, public art in a meaningful way. And so we're developing what we're doing is we're developing a 15 year plan, uh, strategic plan uh, for our public art program. And this is to support our initiatives. And we have drinking water supply responsibilities, uh, flood control protection, of course, environmental stewardship. The program is made possible uh, through voter approved safe, clean water and natural flood protection program, uh, which allocates uh, funding to install and maintain public art projects, including murals on Valley Water property. Thank you again for your participation and helping us uh, shape our public art program. Thank you. Thank you, directors, for your leadership, support for our efforts, and also for your time this evening. I would now like to introduce our consultants and Valley Water staff who will lead the presentation. I would like to acknowledge them here from the Cultural Planning Group, Linda Flynn, thank you, and David Pletner Saunders, thank you. And from Valley Water's Office of Community Benefits, these folks have put a lot of work into this meeting and a lot of the work that's going into the strategic plan. Renee Moreno, thank you. Robert Marmito. Diana Padilla, and Kristen Yasakawa. As a reminder, we kindly request if you could please hold all questions until the end of the presentation. Our goal is to answer every question for the folks in the room and also those on Zoom using the chat and raise features as mentioned. I'm now gonna turn this over to Kristen to start the presentation. Kristen. All right, thank you so much, Don, and uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As Don mentioned, I'm Kristen Yasukawa. I'm the Community Benefits Program Administrator, and I'm overseeing um, our public art plan with our team. And so we are excited to share it with you today. All right, so before uh, we really get into public art, we just wanted to uh, share for those who may be unfamiliar with us, um, who we are. So we are the Santa Clara Valley Water District and we are now known as Valley Water. 
Um, we are a public agency that's a special district of the state, and we're probably most well known for being the wholesale drinking water provider for Santa Clara County. But we also have a three pronged mission um, to additionally deliver uh, flood protection and healthy creeks and ecosystems in Santa Clara County. So these three pillars of Valley Water's mission is um, where our public art will be uh, centered around. All right, and just so that we're all on the same page in the terminology that we're using today, we wanted to share what is public art. So public art is art that's in public spaces, it's accessible to the public and is visually and physically accessible. So public art can serve many purposes um, and take uh, many different forms, sizes, and scales and can be temporary or permanent. So it often interprets the history of a place, its people, and address any social and environmental issues. So some examples of public art are murals, and they can be wall paintings that tell stories or convey messages. There's also sculptures like 3D artworks, um, digital art, and art that's interactive that might blend um, the physical space and the digital space or uh, use technology. And there's also functional art, community art, um, new media, and even uh, performances and festivals can be considered public art. So uh, as a fun fact, currently um, more than 725 cities, counties, and states, and even other water agencies do have um, a percent for art requirement. So that's to help fund their public art programs and invest in it. All right, so you may be wondering, why is public art important for Valley Water and why are we interested in public art? So um, as Director Bell mentioned in the opening remarks, we do have uh, some funding in our Safe Clean Water and Natural Flood Protection Program uh, voter approved uh, parcel tax, where we have uh, 1.5 million available over 15 years dedicated to uh, a putting public art in Valley Water infrastructure and property. So as part of our strategic planning process, we will actually be looking and evaluating at other potential funding sources to, uh, that makes sense with the type of art we're looking at. Um, but our three main uh, interests around public art are to repurpose and beautify Valley Water's infrastructure. So as a water agency here in the Valley, we own property and infrastructure throughout the county. So there's um, places such as treatment plants, outdoor classrooms, we have levees and flood walls. And so there are so many opportunities that are within our neighborhoods to beautify those areas with art. Um, one of our next goals is to engage our communities and our local artists. So Valley Water is a community partner and sees uh, public art as a way to uh, engage with our community and also use art as an educational and awareness tool for things like water conservation and environmental stewardship. Um, also, art reaches a diverse audience and each person connects with art in different ways. So we are excited for the possibilities for that. And then um, additionally, we also are interested in public art to help us deter trash, debris, and graffiti near creek and creeks and waterways. So as you may know, Valley Water has very robust and um, active programs to pick up litter and to uh, clean up graffiti once it's there. But we see public art as a proactive opportunity to um, beautify our spaces and deter the graffiti and litter. All right. So just to um, share what we've done so far in the public art space is that we have completed two pilot projects in conjunction with our Valley Water Youth Commission, a, a cohort of high school students from throughout Santa Clara County as well as um, our San Jose artist, Paul J. Gonzalez. 
So we've worked on these two pilot projects, which are first the Adopt a Benches project, and um, that's the re where we revitalized seven benches throughout the county with artwork that showed uh, some environmental stewardship message visually and to raise awareness of the nearby creeks um, and native species in the area. And then the second pilot project that we've completed is our pilot mural. So we actually have a visual display of Valley Water's mission, including the innovation and diversity at Valley Water um, here at Valley Water's headquarters in South San Jose. So to give you a sense of what that looks like, here um, is a before and after, a sample of one of the seven benches that we uh, revitalized through that pilot project. As you can see before, um, it was very plain and had some damage and we revitalized it, repainted it and have the artwork on the benches as well. And here is a close up of what it looks like on top of one of the benches. This one is at Uvis Creek at Christmas Hill Park in Gilroy. So as you can see, it points out the creek name as well as a native species. In this case, it's the Western Burrowing Owl. All right, our second pilot project was our mural, uh, which was completed uh, just in the last year. And so this um, image is from a paint day with our youth commission and our Valley Water ambassadors, as well as our board members to help paint the mural. So as you can see, it's an engaging and interactive experience. And then here is the final product um, of the completed mural. So after uh, working on these two pilot projects, uh, we are taking the lessons learned and the successes from those projects and uh, developing a public art strategic plan. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So the strategic plans will serve as a guiding document to help Valley Water identify and prioritize public art opportunities and install where to install and maintain public art projects to beautify Valley Water's property and infrastructure. So the strategic plan uh, will encompass these outcomes. So we're really looking to identify goals and strategies for a robust public art program here at Valley Water. Uh, we're going to be looking at relevant program policies and procedures. Uh, we will also be uh, looking at potential site locations for future public art projects and uh, looking at different funding opportunities and potential partnerships. Um, as well as doing some public art renderings to get a sense of what the possibilities are for our county. And then um, also looking at uh, an implementation plan and timeline. So uh, to uh, explain more about the strategic plan and the process, I'd like to uh, invite Linda Flynn from the cultural planning group. Thank you very much, Kristen. Again, my name is Linda Flynn. I'm a partner with Cultural Planning Group. Um, we are based in San Diego. We're really thrilled to be working on this project. And as Don introduced, uh, my partner, David Plettner Saunders, and we also have our partners with AECOM uh, from San Francisco, Sarah Dunan with us and Green Rockman Thai. So thank you for being here. So we've spent quite a bit of time working with Valley Water staff uh, to identify priorities and benefits that Valley Water wants to see from the public art plan for their organization and also for the community. So while raising the public understanding of Valley Water's work, they want the plan to be a connector to community, fostering new collaborations, improving aesthetics of infrastructure in public spaces um, while promoting water conservation and environmental stewardship. So this is kind of our overall uh, approach to the planning process. We call it a triangulation methodology where we're integrating qualitative and quantitative data, which means that we're using existing research and that we're having conversations like these tonight 
um, to inform the plan. We really want to ensure that we're hearing from everyone internally, but that we're the hearing from the community because what we find is many of the best ideas for plans emerge from the community conversations um, and discussions as we're going to have tonight. And this is our anticipated timeline. As you can see by the highlighted area, we're in the community input stage and we expect to finish the plan in late spring of 2024. And of course, a Valley Water leadership and board of directors will be involved throughout the process um, to adoption of the plan. Valley Water wants to collect input from the community to incorporate into the public art plan as we just discussed. So this is what we're seeking your input on and what we'll be discussing later this evening and also through an online survey. So the most important ways uh, public art can make a difference, the type of public art you want to see, where are some of the best places for public art, and we'll be collecting this input through these discussions and then through the community survey, which will be open for responses until uh, the end of October. So, but before we jump in, we wanna talk a little bit about the approaches to public art and also give you um, some examples of art that intersects um, art and water. So this is a sub summary. I'm not going to say all approaches to public art because there's probably even more. Um, and these, the ones that we see right now um, as most relevant to the strategic plan is enhancing infrastructure, uh, creating educational experiences um, in the community, participatory public art opportunities um, between Valley Water and municipalities and community residents, uh, temporary public art, and art that intersects with technology. So a couple of examples, um, Jeppe Hine, it's actually the name of this uh, piece is actually appearing rooms. Excuse us, we have a mistake on the side. It's appearing rooms. Um, he creates installations with reflective surfaces, surfaces and immersive elements. And his art really kind of blurs that division between the art environment and the audience and is very interactive. So this is a temporary art installation and it, you'll see it, it pops up in parks and public places all over the world. Leando Ehrlich did the swimming pool. This um, experienced a little bit of a resurgence um, during COVID uh, as a pop-up public art project as well. So Scottsdale, Arizona has one of the most renowned public art programs um, in the US. And this is an example of an integrated functional art that plays an important purpose. So it is integrated with their flood control system and the stallion spout during flood events. And on the other side of the canal, um, the artwork that's not pictured here acts and functions as a berm and a measuring tool for water levels. It's really quite striking in its functionality, um, but also uh, it's the art form is quite amazing. If you're ever in Scottsdale, you should drive past it. This is a New York City um, project that was repurposing a water tank in Brooklyn. So they did a beautiful stained glass sculpture that's visible um, from the river in Manhattan. And New York City is full of rooftop water tanks. And this, this work is really primarily for art's sake, um, but it really also calls attention to the longstanding basic infrastructure in the city that, that um, can be um, experienced through art form in a different way. So we talked a little bit about the diverse roles of public art, and these are examples of local 
um, projects that create and enliven public spaces and parks and trails. Uh, this is a project by S.J. Walls. Um, obviously, it provides creative opportunities for youth. Uh, community engagement is really important um, in a public art program, which really um, includes the community in the conversation of what that art should be, but also possibly in the creation of it. Raising awareness of pre preserving our environment is another um, example here, the Guadalupe Watershed Education Campaign, beautifying spaces where Valley Water has infrastructure. Uh, Kristen talked about this piece by Paul Gonzalez, who is here with us today. Enhancing community pride. Uh, this was a type of fashion show where, where clothes were made out of recycled materials and then celebrating the, the diversity and um, tribes of the community. So before we go to the discussion questions, um, we just wanted to say this is a discussion. There's gonna, we have about six or seven questions. Um, we really want to hear your opinions. Um, so please, it's not just a Q and A. Uh, we wanna have a full discussion with people on Zoom and also in the room. And I am going to invite my partner, David, up to lead the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm David Pletner Saunders. And as Linda said, I am her business partner with the Cultural Planning Group. And we are um, really interested in hearing your ideas tonight. And let me just remind folks who are participating online that um, you can raise your hand. And uh, when Roberto links you up to be able to speak, please give us your name. And uh, then you uh, can offer your comment. <clears throat> So if you could move to the slide, Roberto, or is that something I can do? There we go. These are the questions that we have for you. We're really interested in just eliciting your ideas. Uh, we're happy to ask, answer questions that you might have, but we're really looking for um, community input to help us design the strategic plan for public art. Our first question for you is if you would share with us examples of public art from anywhere that you you like or have uh, appreciated and why uh, why you think that. We do have a hand raised um, in the chat. Uh, so Jesse Cup, we, we're gonna go ahead and unmute you and you could uh, ask your question verbally. <clears throat> Oh, it's not raised. Hey, everybody. Um, so this is Jesse Cup. I'm chair of the Mountain View Visual Arts Committee. And I want to thank you for um, coming together and putting together this presentation and, and deciding to implement a public art program. I think that's awesome. We are actually working on the public art strategy in Mountain View right now and hoping to get that passed in uh, December to update our, our public art policy that hasn't really been updated for many, many years. Um, and I just finished a research paper on the benefits of public art and implementation strategies. So I'd be happy to share that with you guys if you're interested. Um, and shout out to Paul Gonzalez. He's a great, really community oriented artist. I'm happy uh, to hear that you're working with him. And I uh, don't think you can get a better guy for the job. So looking at these discussion questions, um, just just broadly, I like um, public art that provides shade. I like functional art, like the benches, the bike racks, uh, murals. Definitely you want to put murals in uh, wherever there's graffiti hotspots and that'll help deter that. Uh, unfortunately, I did see some uh, graffiti on Stevens Creek Trail recently, and and uh, the art, the people who who did that left their cans there. So there's you know definitely correlation to graffiti and pollution. <laughs> um, but also there's a lot of studies showing that public art uh, on these walls will help prevent the graffiti. Um, so that's definitely a step in the right 
direction. Um, one thing I want to mention, I saw that you had some really cool examples of public art from different cities around the world. Uh, was it New York, Arizona, these cool installations. And those are awesome and something, definitely something to aspire to. But all of those artworks are way out of your budget. It's just not going to happen uh, with the amount of money that you're allocating. So I think you said 1.5 million over 15 years. So that's about 100,000 per year. Um, and just as an, as an example, we chose art for the Mountain View uh, train station remodel recently. And it was over, it was probably about $280,000 or something worth of public art. And that's just one project. Um, we did recently raise our percent to art fee to 2% from 1%. So I think you should look at a more um, sustainable, maybe reliable source of funding, such as a percent for art program. Uh, one to two percent would be ideal, and then that way you know for each uh, new piece of infrastructure or new trail or whatever it is you're building, um, then you have this set amount of money that is designated for artwork that you can count on. Um, anyway, I don't want to take up too much time, um, but I'd be happy to uh, email you comments and um, hopefully talk to you more in the future. And thanks again. Thank you very much, Jesse. We really appreciate your comments and please do forward um, any materials you would like uh, to do. Roberto, do we have a specific email? Yeah, okay. He's popping in the chat. Awesome. I also wanted to just comment on your, um, um, your perspective that a million and a half dollars over 15 years is going to provide some limitations or constraints to the kind of art that's possible. And we certainly understand and agree with your perspective. And, and that $100,000 a year will get smaller with inflation over the coming decade and a half. So um, your comments are very uh, sharp, sharply observed and accurate. And just want to say we are considering ways to find additional funds or leverage partnerships to bring more resources to the table for this program. Yeah, thanks. Can we go to, can we go to our next, the next person? So at the moment, we don't have any other hands raised, but we do have questions uh, in our Q&A queued up. Great. I'd be happy to take those questions. Uh, uh, one second. Good. Okay. So first question is, must all artwork be on Santa Clara Valley Water District property? Um, certainly the majority of it will be, but not necessarily. Um, Valley Water has joint use agreements uh, and other relationships with cities and nonprofits, other agencies throughout the county. So I think that broadens the um, field of opportunity. Um, next question, uh, how does Santa Clara Valley Water District plan on targeting and including local artists and emerging artists? I'll combine those two. Those are two questions, but it sounds like there's so much I'll combine them. So local artists and emerging artists. Well, thank you very much for that. And I would uh, say we haven't designed that part of the program yet. And one of the things that we wanted to get input on tonight is... Um, whether that is important to the community and what suggestions you might have for us on how to uh, engage emerging artists. Do you, would you like to share some comments um, um, verbally? Yes, I have, I do have a hand raised. Um, so the, these questions are actually anonymous, so we're, we're not able to exactly know who, who asked them, but I do have a hand raised and I'll go ahead and have Stephen Rubalcaba, um, we're going to go ahead and, and unmute you, and you could ask your question verbally or uh, your comments. So, Stephen. Hi, good evening, and thank you for for, uh, for taking my question. And I just wanted to comment um, on, on the targeting of local and emerging artists. Uh, my comment is, yes, I believe it is important. Um, I was uh, you know, born and raised in this uh, county, and um, I'm actually a local and emerging artist myself. <laughs> so, so all of these 
types of um, projects, especially when they're funded by you know, the local taxpayers, I think it makes sense to really try and target some of the local folk here. There are a lot of local talent here within the city and the county. Um, so it is very much important to me, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And we agree. And in a community like this, there are so many well-qualified uh, artists emerging and established um, who can be considered for uh, public art projects. We agree. Um, and we also have another hand raised. Um, so Catherine D. Harris, uh, we'll, we, we are going to unmute you and you could go ahead and uh, speak. Hi, thank you for hosting this. And I wish I could have gotten there in person, but I'm so glad that you guys are doing this on Zoom as well. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine, Catherine. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I'm um, the Director of Public Programming with the College of Humanities and Arts with San Jose State University. And we had an opportunity to talk to some of your team earlier this week, which was really invigorating. And we've managed to be able to create a public art as resistance walking tour in downtown San Jose to look at all of the wonderful artwork that's already available and made public to everyone. And I'm wondering how extensively y'all have started to work with or speak with constituencies like, like higher ed, because our walking tour was created by San Jose State students and faculty who are already residents of the County of Santa Clara and represent the diverse communities and voices I think that you're trying to get to see. Great comment, Catherine. It's nice to have you call in. Uh, it was Linda and I who met with you uh, earlier this week or last week, I guess it was. And um, we absolutely agree that um, colleges and universities and um, um, you know high schools as well or lower grade levels should be involved in this program. And we were delighted to learn about the walking trail that you shared with us uh, during the meeting. So let me um, ask another question of the community. Um, what types of art would you like to see Valley Water provide to the community? What kinds of art makes sense to you for Valley Water? Um, so we do have a comment in the, um, the chat here. Uh, I think answering one of the previous discussion questions, but I'll go ahead and read it out loud. Uh, so the comment reads, Crown, uh, examples of public art I like. Crown fountain spouting water in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing installation idea with the use of art, technology, and water. I think we can scale this concept down to fit our budget. Well, that would be challenging to do, but it would be a great challenge for an artist to take on. And that is a wonderful piece. Linda and I know it well. Um, and I wondered if you would share a little bit more with us as a follow-up to your comment about why you think that's particularly suited for Valley Water and why you like it. Yeah, so um, Janal, I'm sorry, sorry if I pronounced that. Uh... Wrong. If you would like to speak, we could unmute you. You could raise your hand and we could unmute you. Okay, there we go. Uh, so Janal, hands is raised. We could go ahead and unmute you and you could uh, speak verbally. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so I mean, I really like this installation uh, because it was relating to water and I feel like um, a lot of families and kids, they come together uh, and having like water as a focal point of this artwork. Uh, it's pretty nice to hang out in the evening. Um, you know, it's, it's like having water as a focus. And, you know, I also feel like, so I'm a landscape designer. So I also feel like we can put some messages like on saving water and stuff like that, you know, to somehow make it our own uh, using this as an inspiration. Are you an artist yourself? Uh, yes, I'm an architect. Yes, wonderful. Yes, thank you very much for those comments. 
Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, I just thought it was a great inspiration to have something to start with. <laughs> yes, and, and I appreciate that it's in a park, it's in a public place. And as you say, it engages families. It's very interactive, very accessible, both physically and, um, you know, it's not a puzzle to solve. It's a it's a beautiful piece of work to be in, to be involved in and yeah. sometimes get wet, get wet with. Exactly. And, you know, Santa Clara is known for technology also. So I thought it might be a great way to, <laughs> um, you know, combine technology and water and art. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we've shared with Valley Water that when Linda and I were first becoming aware of the possibility of working on this project, we too were intrigued by the possibilities of using water because artists have used water in artwork for centuries. And there are so many aesthetic possibilities. So anyway, thank you again for your comment. Thanks so much. Bye. So what types of art would you like to see Valley Water provide to the community? What makes sense for Valley Water? Yes, um, we do have a few hands raised, so I'll go down the list. Um, could we go ahead and unmute Jesse Cup? Hey, it's uh, Jesse again. And you can hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you, Jesse. Oh, awesome. All right. So, yeah, I think um, within the current planned budget, it makes the most sense to do more 2D stuff. So murals, you can probably get a lot of mural coverage um, with environmentalist themes and conservation themes, displaying local wildlife, um, local culture, history, showcase the diversity of the area. Um, that's always good to get the community involved and and showcase the residents, make it site specific. Um, and then we had, we'd started a uh, utility box painting program in Mountain View before the pandemic and we had to put it on hold um, due to lack of staffing, but we're gonna restart that soon. That's another relatively inexpensive way to do public art is if you have any uh, like signal boxes, utility boxes, electrical boxes, things like that um, on your land you could paint those. Uh, painting benches, things like that. Um, it's pretty pretty cheap and easy to do. And then I think as you get hopefully uh, into a bigger budget later, then I think it'll be more possible to do site-specific sculpture and, and interactive artwork and, and go bigger. But I think for now, it's probably best to focus on the, the 2D stuff. And um, yeah, that's my comment. Thank you, Jesse. And again, it's really practical and sounds like it's born of experience. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, another hand raised, uh, Stephen Rubal Kappa. We, we're going to go ahead and unmute you, and you could uh, provide your comments. Hi, hello, and thanks again. Um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to also, um, you know, just let you know as a community member uh, and resident here, the types of art I love to see are, you know, as were mentioned, some. Public murals are always quite fabulous, and the locations of these murals, y'all showed one that was along the Guadalupe River or Creek, um, which is fantastic. You know, I think that space needs some beauty and some color um, at times. So certainly two-dimensional art and uh, uh, throughout the county, whatever type of sculptural, sculptural art rather, um, uh, I think is also fabulous, you know, can last a long time. And I wanted to mention something about these designs that we're talking about. Um, I think it's certainly okay for these designs to not be so literal with, re with respect to water. Um, you know, I think there is room certainly for, uh, um, you know, some other types of, um, of artwork that doesn't really have to be literal. Um, you know, abstractions I think would be quite pleasant and okay and also engage the community with respect to how we're thinking about artwork. Um, so uh, those would also be quite fantastic to see around uh, the area. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Is it Jesse or Stephen? Stephen, sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I was seeing some heads nod in the room here uh, while you were speaking. Other comments about types of art you would like to see Valley Water provide to the community? Yeah, we have a few more. So we have another hand raised, and then I'll get into the comments that were typed online via Zoom. Um, so Anthony Villarreal, we're going to go ahead and unmute you, and you can provide your comment. Yes, hi. My name is Anthony Villarreal, and I'm a designer, uh, artist, 
couture designer, tape artist, and the kind of types of art that I like to see are much more abstracts. The gentleman who spoke before talked about abstractions. And um, I just was reminded of a time that I was in Botswana, Africa, flying over the desert and seeing all of these uh, trees that were broken, that were all over the place because of the elephants. And all I could think of was how to, what if we could gather all those uh, tree branches and everything and build a park and make animals or images and colored um, stuff that people, a park that people could enjoy with that. So I'm saying, looking in the backyard at what's there already and how you can take that to the community, get them involved in looking and gathering and bring it all together to create something of an abstraction, but yet still have um, a creative influence. So I'm calling from the San Bernardino County. I'm out here. And this whole idea of public art is very new for me. So I'm very pleased to be here and to listen to all this information and all these wonderful people have great ideas. And I laud you all. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. So I'm intrigued. Where are you in San Bernardino County? You in the Joshua oh. Tree area or? <laughs> No, I mean, I'm more culturally deprived. I'm out in San Jacinto, California. Got it. Okay. But I, have, I have a background. I spent 25 years in Paris, France. So go figure. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your comments. And I, I think uh, we agree with you that a diversity of kinds of art, you know, uh, abstraction versus literal uh, is certainly desirable for this program. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we have a, a few more comments here in the, the chat box. So I'll go ahead and read the first one um, from Cynthia. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, from Annabelle Foz. Um, the comment reads, I work with adults with special needs who have very good artists who can contribute to your project. We recently had our art exhibition and they have great ideas and concepts. My team can work on small spaces like benches and anything similar. Thank you. That's a great suggestion and a great offer. And if you wouldn't mind uh, getting us your contact information to Roberto in the chat, um, we'll make sure um, we'll make sure to put that in the hopper. But we we agree with your comment for sure that um, adults with disabilities or even you know children with disabilities can certainly be involved in a public art program. All right. And then next comment is from Rita Norton. Um, I would like some of the art to demonstrate the environment and where water comes from and how water is important to local wildlife and habitat. Yeah, absolutely. And that fits with the mission and the functions of Valley Water and would absolutely be appropriate topics for this public art program. Thank you. Okay. And then we have a, a couple more um, from Cynthia. So uh, Cynthia says, I agree with what Jesse said about historical references and utility boxes. I love the artwork of the Chicano mural in downtown San Jose. The Creek Walk near Levi's Stadium under roadways is beautiful. The embossing of natural items, sculpture is wonderful too. Along with others, abstract art is wonderful. Not everything needs to be a literal learning lesson. Love found things art. Art from the trash day cleanups, question mark. Wow, there's a lot packed in those comments and they all sound like great suggestions to us. So thank you very much for those comments. Do we have more hands raised or can we go on to our next? Well, our next question for you, and you've already started to suggest some responses to this. Our question is, what are some specific places you think Valley Water should locate artworks? We've heard about creeks, utility boxes. What else? <clears throat> oh, 
we have two hands raised again. So uh, Stephen, uh, we'll go ahead and unmute you and you could uh, provide your comment. Yeah, uh, you did uh, mention that, that um, or reminded us rather that we're gonna have it on uh, uh, on some of the electrical boxes that we see. I think that is such a fabulous idea. I see a lot of them around town being painted and it would be great um, um, to see a lot more sponsored by your organization. I mean, and you even showed uh, the 2022 mural or community mural project on your um, uh, facility or on the building over in South San Jose. I think that is fantastic. I think the more larger scale murals um, we can put on public buildings, I think is just one way to even keep it more beautiful and colorful, um, perhaps even sponsoring, having some of those painted on some of the local libraries. I love to see when the local libraries have artwork on them. Um, it makes sense to me that all, um, if not most public buildings should have some type of creative shell, um, either painted on it or attached to it or structures, excuse me, or sculptures and structures inside of the, uh, of these facilities. Um, but I don't think there's any wrong place for public artwork, I guess, uh, is my ultimate comment. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate the sentiment and, and those specific suggestions. Thank you. I wanted to mention that we, um, our consulting team uh, went on an excellent tour today of, of Valley Water facilities and locations. Today, we'll be doing the same all day tomorrow. And one of the things we were observing is that um, some of these facilities are not open to the public. They're uh, secure for, for very good reasons. Um, and at the same time, they can be visible from uh, the street or there can be public tours in those facilities. And um, while they, I don't think Valley Water has a collection of utility boxes like a city does, they do have a very interesting collection of structures related to you know, water pur purification, uh, water treatment, uh, flood control. And so there's a quite a variety of um, infrastructure that can be considered for public art. Yes, and I think that's a great spot. I've been on those tours, by the way. It would be fantastic to see um, some type of beautification project. As you mentioned, it can be seen from quite far away from the highways right there. So great suggestion. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Can we go to our next person? Yeah, so uh, Jesse Cup, we're going to go ahead and unmute you, and you can provide your comment. Hey, um, I definitely agree with the last speaker in saying there's, there's no bad place for public art, um, so thank you for that. And I'm not too familiar with Valley Water um, in terms of like what lands do you own, what facilities do you, do you manage? I've been on one a tour as well um, in one of your water facilities, but do you have um, like pedestrian trails, bike trails, or is that is that out of your wheelhouse? There are some trails that um, are, I if correct me if I'm wrong, Kristen, but they're mostly joint use. They're partnership uh, with other agencies or cities. So yes, there are trails, and we we definitely can consider them as uh, venues for public art. Mm, great, yeah, I think um, since public art has been shown to to be able to um, encourage active transportation and and activate spaces. Um, anytime you have some place where people are walking or biking, that's a fantastic place to put public art. It'll get more people active and out and about because um, it's a more enjoyable space once you beautify it. Um, if there's any crossover with public transit, um, if you're you know near or any bus stops or train stations, for example, that's another great place to put public art. Um, and then, like the last speaker said, just anywhere you know, visible to the public. Um, although I would kind of prefer to focus more on um, art being visible, I guess, a more human scale to, to cyclists and pedestrians, um, just because people driving by don't usually have the time to, or, you know, they're, they're not stopping and appreciating the art in, in their car. So I, I kind of like the, the human scale artwork where it's more directed towards I don't know, people rather than vehicles. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. And we have someone here in the room, Paul J. Gonzalez. Hi, this is Paul J. Gonzalez. Um, art, I, uh, I think some um, where our creeks connect with our street. I've seen some uh, Valley Water um, property and buildings, and I think those would be some great spots for, um, it would be visible to the street and also act um, 
connect with the creek down below so people are more aware of the creek activities or the creek paths um, from the streets so not only is it visible when you're using the creek but it's visible from the uh, street side as well so um, everybody gets to see it you know but i think artwork that is near the combination of street and creek can be very impactful and i do like the idea of the found art um, art um, the found objects and created recyclable art which um, a lot of people have been doing here like south bay uh, south bay uh, clean creeks um, where they found objects and made it into art as well. And I really enjoy seeing those because of how they discovered that and created the art from the found objects and makes you to give you an understanding of what people are doing to preserve those creeks. Um, another thing I wanted to say, I know I'm going back, but um, not every building has to be a full on art piece, maybe even accents of like some specific animal or some, some something, um, an object that of importance um, for instance, with all this lightweight material we have, we can also hang things up and do a specific thing instead of a full-on mural in case we just want to do a little accent. So from accents to full-on walls to changing buildings and making them into a different shape with color and, you know, sculpture. So it's so amazing to have so many artists and creative minds participating in the conversation tonight, <laughs> offering really creative suggestions. And Paul, if I remember correctly, when we spoke to you a week or two ago, the um, piece that you mentioned with the Creek Conservancy was actually stuff, trash, and other items that were found collected from the Creek, right? Yeah. So doubly meaningful. Do we have other comments? Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So we have a few more in the chat. So. Um... Two suggestions is one, uh, overpasses, and then uh, locating art along cinder block walls. For instance, the walls along Lawrence Expressway Creek uh, on public buildings and putting art everywhere. You can have a functional light post or a beautiful functional light post. Yes, absolutely. Great comments. Thank you. And then we do have another um, comment. Uh, Rainwater harvesting and rainwater collection can be a great concept if combined to rain gardens and native planting that save water. What I am saying is to have a natural public art that teaches water conservation. Wow, that's a great uh, idea to integrate art into um, something larger. Were there more comments, Roberto? Great, we have another question for you. Um, how would you like to see the community involved in Valley Waters Public Art Program? You've offered some suggestions already, for example, involving people with disabilities in the creation of, of an artwork. What other ideas do you have for getting the community involved in the public art program? seeing some hands raised. So um, we'll go ahead and start off with us. Uh, oh, we have one in person in the audience first. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Inning Han. I'm an art teacher and I teach um, preschooler and elementary um, students and a few um, uh, middle school students. Mm -hmm. So we have an idea of a pop-up art um, like uh, like a pop-up shop and using collected trash to create art. So we still are like, working on the ideas. Um, that's kind of why I'm in the meeting today. Um, so for me as an art teacher is that I want to involve them at this younger age. And in elementary school, a lot of school does not have art teacher. And I volunteer seven years working um, at the same time, um, volunteer at my kids' school teaching art. Um, I like to see more of these um, opportunities for kids to get involved and make things. So my my kid and her friend have this idea um, of collecting these, but where do we go? So we are planning to talk to the school. So we're gonna sit on the meeting and see how the principal reacts. <laughs> Uh, to the ideas. Um, so, um, yeah, um, I, I guess I'm trying to, 
I'm here trying to figure out how we can involve in terms of younger children mm -hmm. in this case. So thank you so much uh, for sharing your idea and for, for coming here tonight. Um, you may, I think you had not arrived yet, but when we were showing some examples of pilot public art projects that Valley Water has done over the past couple of years, it included one that was um, done by the Youth Commission here at Valley Water. So it was done with high school students. They helped design the piece, they helped paint the piece. Um, we love the idea of having school kids involved in public art projects and would love to find a way to incorporate that into the public art program. The plan hasn't been written or adopted yet, so it's premature for us to say on anything to you more than we love your idea and uh, think it's a, a very glad you made that suggestion. And let me just comment to everyone uh, participating in the meeting tonight that um, we really do love your ideas, um, and I think you will likely see uh, many of them, or at least some of them, incorporated into the public art plan. But as planners, we can have great ideas, but it's always so much stronger if it's supported by community opinion and personalized by community suggestions that really anchor it um, in the community here in Santa Clara County. So that's another reason that we're glad not only to hear your ideas, but to say, say, anchor this plan in community opinion. Um, we do have one comment in the chat and then uh, three hands raised. So I'll start off with the comment first. Uh, so for community involvement, reach out to the local high school art teachers. They have AP art classes, and this would add to their portfolio they need to submit. Great comment, yes add to their portfolio as well as contribute to a public artwork. Thank you. And then um, we do have about three hands raised. So I'll go down that list again. So uh, we'll go ahead and unmute Stephen, and then you could go ahead and speak. Hi, thank you again for allowing me to comment um, on the question, which is, uh, let me remind myself of uh, <laughs> the question. How would you like to see the community involved in Valley Waters public art program? Well, I think, I mean, there has to come a point where the community links up with your organization. So I, I presume there will be some kind of application or proposal process, um, um, which is fantastic. And I also wanted to suggest that perhaps there can be um, maybe various calls for art. So y'all develop and uh, think of the concept and put out a local call for art, whether it be on your social media platforms, through your various newsletters. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to get the word out, um, uh, but those are always really nice and fun um, uh, to see those types of opportunities and the people leveraging those opportunities also being you know, local community residents uh, um, and creatives. Uh, uh, and that's all the comment I had for that question. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And I think it's uh, almost a foregone conclusion that uh, Valley Waters Public Art Program will include calls to artists um, out to the community, including emerging and local artists to submit their ideas. All right, we have um, Jesse Cup. We'll go ahead and unmute you and you could uh, speak. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, so I was just gonna say how, how do you wanna see the community involved? I think you uh, need to do what you're doing right now, which is to get public feedback. Um, and that means, you know, maybe there's a new, uh, big mural going in, you know, you can have a neighborhood meeting and see, ask the community that lives nearby, what what kind of art do you want to see here and let them kind of shape what that's going to look like because um, you need community buy-in and to get this done. Um, and partner with uh, local galleries like Empire 7 or um, nonprofit galleries um, like Work San Jose, um, Local Colors, I believe has a big team of mural artists as well. So if you, you know, push out these calls um, to the broader, you know, internet or newspaper, or what, however you're going to advertise those calls for artists, um, I think you could also loop in these local art organizations and then that way more local artists get a chance to apply and hear it. Um, and speaking of local, um, it's, it's an awesome idea to have local artists and you should try to do it as much as possible, but um, sometimes you don't get that many applications depending on the project from local artists. 
Um, so for us on the Mountain View Visual Arts Committee, the local means the you know, 11 or 13 Bay Area counties, um, depending on how you count the Bay Area. But we, if we just tried to research it to only Mountain View, we wouldn't get enough applicants nearly. So I think, um, you know, you, you can restrict it somewhat. Um, you don't want it to be too narrow, though, um, because you need enough people applying. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Again, um, sharp comments that are born of your experience. It's, it's very evident. And we have another Paul, another Hi, comment. Paul. Hey there. Um, and I like the the uh, people, the public being part of the process too. And but when the uh, artist is selected and they're moving forward, some of these projects are really complicated. You know, with um, from um, to a young artist, they may not understand how you know the process, of how from start to finish. I think maybe inviting them um, somewhere when the the piece is being installed that you can invite the community to talk about the process. So a young person can see, oh, the start from finish, from concept to the meetings, to uh, materials, to installation. Um, so they can see the process and have an understanding and also talk about why the artist chose the certain materials to represent their vision and so forth. So um, because all of it you know, has a meaning and um, in portraying um, you know, what the artist has in their mind. And another thing I wanted to talk about is is going back to what types of art I, I keep going back is I always think about marketing. Art should be visible so everybody can really see it and enjoy it. Um, and I thought what, when I was painting the mural here, I kept seeing a lot of Valley Water vehicles driving in and out. And I thought, well, there's a couple of regular vehicles that the people use to drive through out the streets. Why not do some really creative vehicles, vehicle wraps? um that you know that could be fun so when you're seeing it drive down the street you saw some of the lady a ladybug car or something about or uh, designs of the different pipes of you know the gray water the purple pipes um or different butterflies that are within um the, uh, santa clara county that can be t just wrapped around the whole car entire car because sometimes seeing these things pop up is kind of exciting you know so it's like wow there it is you know, and so there we go. Thank you, Paul. Um, <clears throat> we have one more uh, hand raised. Uh, so Justin Triano, we're going to go ahead and uh, unmute you and you can speak. Hello. Hello My name man. is Justin Triano. Um, I am director of OX and an artist myself, as well as a Valley of Water ambassador. Um, welcome to the project. Thank you for being here. Um, so this kind of answers or addresses a couple questions, but um, I think because that it is tax dollars, that there should be a priority almost exclusively to people who live within that area. Um, and I, I think this for a couple reasons. One is because it's reinvesting the money back into the community that paid it. Um, as well as it's reinvesting money back into the people who live here and, and able to help them move forward in their, their career. I would encourage uh, Valley Water to try not to look so much for world-class art and look for art that's kind of rooted um, in that space. Um, um, excuse me, I'm out of park. Um, yeah, and it's good for, you know, when to deter graffiti and to get people to uh, find attachment to place. Um, you know, you want stories that are being told by the people who are actively there. Uh, it kind of brings more of an attachment to it than someone outside of our city telling those stories. Um, so that's my comment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, your comments make tremendous sense. And there's no question that public artworks that are really rooted in a community and an artist's experience in that community can be very powerful. Hi, my name is Monica Rose. Um, along the lines of what Justin was saying in regards to seeing the community get involved, I agree with that. I think it's very important to let the neighborhoods be involved, get their participation. It gives them a sense of um, ownership and pride and care for that space. So, cause a lot of times these spaces end up getting 
you know, vandalized or, you know, something goes wrong where they're deteriorating for whatever reason. And if they participated it, they'll, they'll make a point of noticing and calling it to someone's attention mm -hmm. so it can get corrected. Um, and also to go back to types of art um, that I would like to see after listening to so many great ideas, I was remembering a park that is um, in the Brentwood Oakley area. That's um, it's very educational. It's about the geology of that area. And there's a lot of stuff for kids to do. So it's a kid's park. They can learn about that um, geology there and play. And I think it's really important to get that awareness to children and to get them started early. So um, I was going to, to wait till the last question where it says, um, so just community organizations, I was thinking permaculture um, nonprofits, um, doing native you know, plants and uh, getting that type of thing in a park so that you can see how it works and you can participate and learn. Mm -hmm. I see our landscape architects on our team nodding their heads in your comments. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I do appreciate that people are people are um, answering more than one question at a time. That's great. Thank you. I have uh, one more hand raised uh, via Zoom. So Lila, we're going to go ahead and unmute you and you could go ahead and speak. Lila, you should be able to uh, unmute yourself now. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Lila. I would um, agree with uh, Paul Gonzalez's comment that how the art is marketed is very important. And having the community engaged in um, an art walk would be amazing. Um, what I also haven't heard yet in terms of art um, that we'd like to see and, and that would be initial for water is uh, wayfinding and uh, signage that tells you where creeks meet up and, and maybe a little more about how our creek system is intertwined. Layla, we were losing about every other word of that. Could we just ask you to um, try it again? Yeah, I'll try to stay in one place. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, so I would agree with Mr. Gonzalez's comment that how the art is marketed is very important a creek walk could engage the community as well as educate in the process. What I also haven't heard yet in terms of artwork we might like to see is wayfinding that is fun and interactive and discusses how the creeks are intertwined, what trails are connected to one another and what that looks like in terms of our overall water ecosystem. Great, um, thank you. I'm glad, we, I'm glad we got all the words in your comment. <laughs> Thanks, Layla. All right, we have one more uh, question for you. How can Valley Water ensure that its public art program is inclusive and represents the diverse communities it serves within the county? Again, we've heard some comments from you already. We have a hand raised uh, on Zoom. So uh, Jesse Cup, we'll go ahead and unmute you now. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's um, this kind of the same as one of my earlier answers, which is just in community meetings and, and getting the public involved um, early on in the process for whatever particular uh, piece of art you're putting up next, um, getting getting everyone's feedback, and then um, you know, having the focus on local history, local culture, local community, diversity, local artists, all, all that is good. And that doesn't mean every single art piece has to be about that. You, know, you can also have your, your abstract stuff and your your nature and ecology messages, but um, having having a good mix of that kind of work and uh, just getting people's feedback is probably the best way to make sure it represents the community. 
Yeah, thank you, Jesse. And um, again, you're you're absolutely right. We agree that um, community involvement in the initial design and even concept of a public artwork, particularly where it's you know located in or relates to a particular community, that's an excellent way um, to reflect to be inclusive. Um, so thank you. We have other comments. All right. Um, last question for you then is, can you suggest any other community organizations or groups that could partner with Valley Water for public art? You've already suggested a number of organizations, for-profit, nonprofit, and educational, um, that could be potential partners, but we want to see if you have any other suggestions for us. So we have um, Lila. Her hand is raised and we'll go ahead and unmute you. I'm sure South Bay uh, Creek Coalition has already occurred to you guys, but I also encourage you guys to go and look at state and federal grants that would specifically address environmental conservation and beautification projects. Great. Money and <laughs> money and partner organizations. Good suggestions. Thank you. Yes. And we have one person here in the room who would like to speak. Director Beal. Um, I believe that um, there's a lot of runaway youth that are in our creeks and there's programs to help these children that have been abused and one of the key therapy methods is art. And I believe that contacting some of those organizations that do that kind of therapy, art therapy, um, could result in some art in areas they used to live in, in the creeks. And I think that would be, um, profound if we could get that to happen. Thank you. And I mispronounced your name. My apologies. It's Director Bell. I'm uh, Director Bell. Yeah. Of course, I work with the foster care, so I have to say that. So I just, I'm uh, Vice Chair um, Barbara Keegan, and um, my background, um, in addition to being a retired public works professional, has been uh, on the board of a neighborhood association. So I think San Jose in particular, but the whole county, um, it's different neighborhoods and doing that outreach to those different communities, um, I think will provide us with a lot of feedback, maybe not necessarily on the actual artistic elements, but more about how people feel about their community, what they would like the artwork to represent, things of that nature. So, thanks. Thank you, Director. All right. Do we have any other comments, Roberto, on the, in the chat? Um, let me see. We have one comment from Cynthia just agreeing with Director Jim Bell, saying that the idea to get youth involved is fabulous. And then, oh, and we also have a hand raised from Jesse Cup. Uh, which we'll go ahead and unmute you and you could uh, speak your comment. Yeah, I also want to agree with Director Bell. Um, it hadn't occurred to me, but it, it should have because I did some research recently and I found something similar going on in um, Philadelphia um, where they brought people out of the criminal justice system and uh, helped people um, who were involved with the city's Department of Behavioral Health and um, health and intellectual disability services to provide programs at the intersection of arts recovery and healing. So yeah, whether it's uh, people who are living in the Creek or former foster uh, system individuals who, who are having difficulties, whatever it is, I think art can be really um, healing and, and help people have something to be proud of and, and be involved in the community. And um, yeah, even when it comes to um, graffiti, for example, I know that's been mentioned several times, and it's um, one of those things where uh, you, you can find a really good graffiti artist, um, and you can pay them to do a mural and legally, and, and that's something um, a lot of people uh, in the community 
appreciate that kind of art. Um, so, you know, it may not be for every every stretch of the trail or whatever, every community, but it's definitely an option to say, like, here's, here's your legal pathway to have um, your cool artwork out there. So, thanks. Thank you. And we have uh, one more comment in the, the chat that I see here. Um, so this is actually to, a, to the question, can you suggest any community organizations or groups that could partner with Valley Water? And they responded with, Target Santa Clara County orgs, especially the nonprofit art gallery curators. Examples of this is Works San Jose, Local Color, Together We Create, Mosaic, School of Arts and Culture at Mexican Heritage Plaza, Chopsticks Alley, and Gen Arts, to quickly name a few. Um, and this person says, uh, I am currently on the board at Works San Jose. Let me know if you'd like to chat with us. Works is a nonprofit, all volunteer ran community art and performance center since 1976. Great offer. Thank you so much. We've got, we're glad to capture the names of all the organizations you suggested. Hi, this is Paul. Um, another thing to mention is uh, schools and school districts that are near the projects. Um, we've worked with a lot of the different high schools, um, San Jose High, um, when doing some of the projects, whether it's signage, murals, and other types of art um, with the creeks, and um, having them be involved since they're right in the neighborhood as well. They can provide input, maybe even assist um, um, working with them, just even with just letting them know what's happening. Um, the law students will gravitate towards being part of it. So um, I say the school district, but sometimes the school right next to it is just will want to be part of it. So the two. And also keep Coyote Creek beautiful, which is a great program in the Coyote Creek. Do we have more comments? Yes. So um, Director Jim Bell also mentioned uh, San Jose High School. Um, yeah, Thank right, you. Yes. Right next. Oh, for those online, it's right next to the sorry, Coyote Creek projects. Um, and then we also have another comment um, from Lila's. Uh, so going back a couple questions, another way to engage the community is in a walkathon or marathon that highlights Valley Waters trails. <laughs> a whole sporting event. That sounds great. Um, but I think going back to uh, Layla's comment from previously, um, we really do like the idea of, of an art walk or tours of the Valley Public Water, uh, Valley Water Public Art Program once it's, you know, more established. We think that'd be a great way to keep the community connected to the artwork. Let me call for any final comments, and then we have an ask of you. Okay, well, I want to say again, thank you very, very much for participating tonight for your uh, very thoughtful and community anchored uh, comments and suggestions. So you'll see up on the slide now, um, the QR code for our community survey. This is a survey about art. <laughs> it's not like other surveys you take. It's really fun and interesting to do, not very long. We would love it if you would take the survey, but more importantly, if you would forward it to your friends and networks. If you're part of a nonprofit uh, organization or homeowners, we'd love to have you uh, share this with your networks as well. The more input we get, the more likely, likely we are to find support for public art uh, within Valley Water. And with that, let me turn it back to Don Rocha for a couple of um, co final comments and next steps. Thank you, David. And also I want to thank uh, Christian for the presentation and Linda as well. Uh, and before I move any further, if you could proceed to the next slide, please. I also want to acknowledge and thank our directors, Director um, Bell and Vice Chair Keegan for taking time to join us this evening and for your feedback. You know, having you engaged and supporting the work of staff is very important to us. So it's very much appreciated. And the slide that has next steps please. There we are. Thank you. 
So as far as next steps, you can see in the slide, community input will be incorporated into the development of the strategic plan. And that draft plan will be shared with interested stakeholders for review and feedback, which means if you're interested in being a part of that, please do contact us and let us know. And finally, our Valley Water Board of Directors will review the strategic plan and it'll be presented to them in the spring of 2024 for their consideration, both at a committee meeting and a board meeting. This will also provide the public two other opportunities to review and comment on the strategic plan. And please know that we have also, outside of this community meeting, public meeting, have um, engaged with uh, stakeholders in the arts community and gotten their feedback and will continue to do so throughout this process. So that wraps up our presentation. If you do have any follow questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You'll see the contact information here on that slide. Have a good night, everyone. And thank you once more for making time this evening.